Yo, 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 what it do, mother? I'm just joking. Back to another amazing Monday on the Ox Talk podcast with my favorite friends, Roma, Woo. the Ox, and myself, J Rock the Gypsy. Um, we are going to teach you guys a little bit of something, something if you guys want to kind of, you know, feel like me because I feel like you. New track. Don't so pretty much if you want to be a, a tattoo artist. No, but yeah. For, 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 <laughs> if you want to be a tattoo artist, some of the steps you're going to need to take to getting into this industry. Um, Which now is I know cutthroat. you guys have heard me all talk a lot about music and a lot about other stuff that I do and what our company does. That's all fun and dandy. It's all stuff that I have experience in and stuff that I do take very, very serious. But the thing that I do more than anything at all besides entrepreneurship is eat, sleep, and breathe tattoos and the tattoo process and everything about tattooing. It is my life. So I will teach you exactly how to get into this industry and doing everything you need to do, what to expect. I've been through ups and downs journeys for over 15 years, busting my ass in this industry. And I know this industry more than anything else that I pretty much know. So getting first into it. What is an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship is like an internship. It is no different. It is also pretty much the same as going to school. Like you have to take it as like going to an actual college to learn something like a trade school, welding school or anything. You got tools you're gonna learn. You have um, scheduling, you have function, you have mechanics, you have anatomy, and then you have you know, your reason behind it. Then you also have your artistic portion of it. That's all just using, like most of this, it's all using the tools. The rest of it's art, your aspect of art, your training on how to lay shadows, how to lay this and that. Um, you have to have a little bit of knowledge in electricity, voltage, how to work on those things. So there's a lot that goes into it. It's not Who just teaches you that? The artist. So the, your you like artist find an artist or like do, how do you? So your first step is going to be Figuring out what kind of stuff, what you want to tattoo for, like if you want to do colors, okay. yeah, like if it, you know, you, you just, you want to find like a good artist that does something that really like, when you see it, you're like, oh, that would look cool in my house, like I like that, like whatever triggers you, you're going to find an artist like that, you're going to reach out, your best bet is to have some form of portfolio for your artwork. If your medium is painting, you should have a book of paintings. Nobody's expecting somebody who wants the tattoo to have a book full of tattoos because then it kind of voids against like you've been tattooing at home, you've been learning, scratching people, blah, blah, blah. And it, so it leads into a whole more conversation we'll have later. But you wanna have your medium. If, if, if you draw pictures and you, you're known for doing hair, haircut designs, then have a portfolio of pictures of your yeah. hairdos and be like, yo, like I do bomb work. Look, I could do a Da Vinci on the side of this dude's head with some clippers. Like, what can I do with a tattoo machine? I would love to learn. And do that. If you paint, if you wood burn, whatever it is, archive those, put them together. Come in there and be like, this is what I do as an art. I would like to learn your tools, your trade, and come in there aspect it. Don't come in and be like, I just want to be a tattoo artist. I know how to draw. Oh, I love tattoos. I want to be a tattoo because it's not going to work. Um, unless you have a friend who's like, yeah, cool. That'd be straight, bro. You could then come work for me, and then I could probably rip you off after a long run, and then you will never be friends again because that's most of the time how it fucking happens. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Whatever you, when you get an apprenticeship from one of your like friends, you know, you just become a nuisance after a while. So, you know, it's like, well, what do I do? <laughs> so, how much do they normally cost? I know two like, sets and versions. Do you get? You can do a free apprenticeship with somebody who's open and down that wants you to have a free apprenticeship. A free uh, apprenticeship. I didn't know that. A free apprenticeship. My first one was free. Really? Yes. Um, I didn't know. My free apprenticeship also came with a lot of hazing and a lot oh. of abuse, which you can't really expect much more. You didn't pay for shit. 
all the knowledge someone's going to teach you, all the hard work they probably put in, all the years of experience they endured to teach you what they're teaching you, they're giving it to you for free. The least you can do is go fucking clean something, sweep the floor, and everything else. They take it to an extreme sometimes for the most part and try to belittle you and scrub shit with toothbrushes. This is the old school shit because I've been doing this since like, my first tattoo parlor I got into was in 2009. So... In 2009, I was a young young artist working in a shop full of older people. So their behavior towards me was a lot different. And again, I was learning something for free. So that shit, I was a prospect. It wasn't no different than if you were in a motorcycle club and some of the ways they would treat you for that kind of stuff in that atmosphere back then. So, so if it's not free though, how much does it cost? If it's not free, then... I charge three grand, three thousand. Well, yeah, that's not normal. For, when I looked up, it was standard. like three to seven, depending and, on where and, you're at. And what I what I like to do, you know, most most apprenticeships usually go for about a year, sometimes two years. I think we met a one apprentice, Andrew, that had one apprentice that was apprentice for. Right, we had to switch cameras real quick. Um, but how long do they last? They for? usually last about like two years. I mean, we've seen some people with two years. I've met uh, artists that was in his apprenticeship for two years. And uh, it's really based off of your, your how well you're doing, how well you do, how much you put in. I mean, there's some people that come in and maybe do a couple hours at the shop, hang out, maybe draw a picture every couple of days. And like, that's gonna get you so far. But then there's artists that come in, they're, they're, they're waiting for me in the parking lot. They're I'm not having to tell them anything. They they know to sweep. They know the routine. It's like a regular business. They come in and they, they do all those things. A lot of things you don't have to ask them to do because they're so eager and that they're like, I want to do this, this, and this. And then I can focus more so on teaching them everything that they need to know. All the do's and don'ts. All the, the actual guidelines that steps. How to handle things for bio. How to handle things for your, your station and uh, conducting a tattoo. Uh, we can focus on those. We can focus on the art if they don't have the art side down. If they do have the art side down, then it's more focusing on the tools and the aspect on using the tools and all the pieces to everything. You know, brushes, needles. So in each of those, you're going to get a little bit more in one. You're going to get a little bit more freedom. You're also going to get a little more stuff you have to do with a free apprenticeship. So it's really up to you and finding somebody who's going to give you a free one or open to pay. I firmly believe in paying for your apprenticeship because if you have something on the line, you're gonna be dedicated yeah. to have more value mm -hmm. in it. When you, things that are just given to you are usually abused in my opinion. So I do, and like, you know, take a gift and stuff, but it's like, you need to go out, put some money investment into yourself, let people know what you're, you know, that you're serious about it. People are then going to take you serious about learning it, um, and then they'll go ahead and carry forward and teach you everything you need to learn. Ours is about 900 hours uh, of clocking in to, to do about 900 to 1,000 hours, and that gets you fully certified. You can make those hours as much as you need to throughout the week and clog all that stuff. Other people don't really do it by hours. They just do it by months or whatever. Um, you know, you'll... Even in an apprenticeship, you're going to get to tattoo, so it's not like there's por portions of your apprenticeship that that it's like you won't tattoo at all, but then you will get to tattoo, so it's, you don't have to finish finish a full, full, full apprenticeship until you're tattooing somebody. So what's your experience with apprenticeship? Um, so I did my first apprenticeship for a year and a half. In Pennsylvania um, I had already done a bunch of tattoos so I was pretty much thrown right into hey you can tattoo clients but we have to go over like I went through like a week or so of um, do's and don't trainings of the shop and like how to handle and organize and do all the paperwork and stuff so that way it was all done right whenever I was doing it and then I was instantly thrown into apprentice wage tattoos Sorry, it's a big truck. <laughs> um, to apprentice wage tattoos, which I think was literally just them trying to be able to still make money off of me. Uh, 
even whether the tattoos were decent or not because I was making money for them and they were able to give me less of a cut because I was an apprentice. So um, that was just kind of something that had happened. But I was always like the guy who had to clean everything, take all the trashes out. Like I did everything in the shop. Which makes, know, makes sense. Which makes yeah. sense, you know, but it's like the other stuff that was uncalled for would be like they would send me to go get lunch but wouldn't give me enough money and would expect yeah. me to buy their lunches. And they're like, if I came back without their food that was on their menu list, um, then they just would not let me take walk ins for the day. They would be like, nope, you're not tattooing today. And then I kind of would just have to sit there and do nothing but listen and watch people tattoo. So, you know. Have you seen anybody else like. An apprenticeship get hazed or any other apprenticeships? Mm, there was a girl that we worked with that some of the guys were kind of a you know rough house with her and talk shit about her work and kind of push her pretty heavy because she was a girl and um, but they were just old school with it. I don't think it's really like that now as bad um, with people and like being hazing. I think hazing's pretty much started kind of fading its way out. Yeah, because people the are like world. normally talking up and like vocalizing what's happened to them and I think like bringing awareness to that has definitely helped Absolutely. hold people accountable because they're like, oh, what well, if I end up on TikTok or something because yeah. I'm acting like an well, idiot. Well, it's also a new age, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of new artists that are coming out that are getting into tattooing that just have a different mindset. Yeah. And like now that they are established tattoo artists and opening shops and employing other tattoo artists, it's, the standards, it's, 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 the standards have yeah. gone up quite a bit. It isn't as, as roughneck as it used to be but in like like I said when, when I when I came up in the tattoo thing in the beginning it, there was a lot of shops that didn't like each other they were, they were always arguing like it just was it was a bunch of drama at all times and um, I'm really glad that we are far past that our shop doesn't behave in that manner we also don't get involved with other people's um, affairs with uh, their, their business around the city we stay to our own and um I know that there's way too many people in a city for anybody else to be worried about anyone else's clients, you know, like whoever. Yeah, like you said, you can't tattoo. Can't anybody. tattoo everybody. Yeah. I'm not going to even attempt no to try to. Or no matter how good you are. It's just like, you know, you just keep your head down and keep tattooing and, and uh, take care of your clients and people will be happy. Is there any advice you'd give people on how to find a good artist in a apprenticeship program? Instagram. So just like look at their work. Look at their work. And then like DM talk to them, them and see. DM them, yeah. talk to them. I mean like that's, that's the easiest thing you can do is you I mean maybe even ask you like, hey, work. what are the, you know, what are the phases of the apprenticeship? I wouldn't maybe. ask any of that no. questions. I would just simply ask if they were open to taking apprenticeships. And I would ask, I would, I would just simply be like, hey, you know, your work is, is, is really nice. You know, mm -hmm. I've been following you. Just let it, just let it, don't, don't make it long because nobody wants to sit down and read yeah, all that. Yeah. You just send it, hey, I love your work. Been checking it for years. I was wondering if you were open to an apprenticeship program. What would the cost be on that if you were open to it? Question mark, question mark. Please email me at da 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 da. And then they, if they're open to it, then they probably, honestly, like if you, if you emailed me with that or DM'd me that in my Instagram, um, and I could see you were serious. I would look at your page and see your if artwork. I would see if because not only is tattooing about your artwork, but like to be a true successful tattoo artist, it's your life, your lifestyle. Like when you go places, you always have to be the friendly face that you are to make people people feel comfortable that they want to come. Yeah, to not you. have like a bunch of hate on your page. Yeah, you can't. You can't have. You can't be posting. Like, if I go to your page and your page is memes of fuck this side, can't talk to these people, don't, if it's a bunch of, oh, every client cries during tattoo, if it's a bunch of that kind of stuff, like, I, like, I can't, you know, like, that's not my vibes, like, it might be good somewhere, but it's not my vibes, but, like, I want to see that you're about your work, I want to see that you take pride in organizing and posting your work, that your, that your page is about you wanting to do it even if you're not a tattoo artist and you're looking to get into tattooing because that's the whole point of this with the apprenticeship program I want to see that you take passion in your string art let me see 13 pictures on your page that you're passionate about it or if you do shoes I want to see that that's your craft like whatever you're doing and you send me something like that I'm gonna look at your page I'm gonna read your message 
and then I'm going to respond with my offer on it and see if it's there. If it's less, if anything less than that, then I'm not going to take it serious. I'm not going to feel like you're, you're going to take it very serious and, and that's what you really, really want, unfortunately, because I, have to, I, I do have to vent through quite a bit of people because everybody wants to be a tattooer. Everybody wants to do what they want to do, but it's like if they're ready and worthy of it, it has to mean that they have to be ready and putting that work in right now and uh, are approaching that. So you got to have your artwork together. You got to have some kind of background behind yourself. You have to show that you got clientele, that, that you know, that you're able to go network and build people because being a tattoo artist isn't just doing tattoos, but it's also selling yourself, relying on nobody else but yourself to bring you income and money. Yes, you're working at another place that should be bringing you money, but you, if that shop was to leave or the person was to die and the thing was to close and you were an artist to go to a new place or have to start your own, would you be able to successfully thrive? I think that's a big one too because I feel like a lot of people rely on the shop, the shop to, bring, to provide, to provide yeah. customers. And, and it's like, yes, the shop's job is to say, hey, we're a shop, call us, come here, get tattooed. But at the same time, like I said, if you I mean, work there, yeah, so it's the same thing with like real estate. Like if you work for a brokerage, like yeah, they're gonna with marketing to sell the homes and stuff, but it's up to you to get leads on like mm -hmm. new listings. Hundred percent, and yes, the shop provides that, but at the end of the day, if you choose to leave that shop. What value are you bringing to any shop that you're going to yeah, move to? True. Because if, if you move to a shop that just established, could you stay busy and stay afloat? Or are you just moved? like a warm body and just like taking in whatever? Exactly. So at that point, you have to realize like, as an artist, you want to be self-sustained. You want to be able to have a marketing behind like knowledge or at least be open to learn or understanding it. You know, so that has yeah. to be visible. And then like work, professionalism right? is like you don't walk into an interview in your sleepy jammies and ask for a job. You get dressed. <laughs> you get dressed for a job interview, mm -hmm. and if it's particular types of job interviews, you take information based on those things with you. You bring your references. You tell them why you would be fit for the job. Tattooing is no different. It, 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 and actually, it is slightly different because the work and service we perform is permanent yeah it isn't like oh man if you got your car wrecked yeah let me slap you a new bumper on there oh it's crooked Shh, let's put another ribbon in it no it's like this is a tattoo it's, it's there you don't do the tattoo the right way or cause any kind of health issues then it's traumatizing to the client health related at risks to the client it's bad on your imagery for the for yourself so like one wrong move in a tattoo can trigger lots of bad things to happen for you so it's like it's really risky. So it's a, a trade that has to be taken very serious. You have to put in that work, especially if you're going to start asking to learn from somebody who obviously is there with that already. Um, any other questions? No, I think that was no. good. You did all of it. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up real quick and throw it to our sponsors. Okay, so wrapping it up. Freestyle rapper, suicide disaster. Um, Your ADHD is yeah, like my ADHD. Is like, <laughs> so, uh, so, getting into there, just make sure you got all your portfolios ready. Check out your artists. Check out their Instagram. DM them professionally. Try to not to sound like a goomball. Um, if you are a goomball, just please check your spelling. You know, grammar. steer clear. Um, Take the shit seriously, be open-minded, and be prepared to work your ass off mm -hmm. if you really, really want to get there, I'll tell you that much. Um, it's a great life, tattooing and being an apprentice of a tattooist can, can lead and take you some really cool places. So if you're interested, feel free to send me a DM, JRock the Gypsy on Instagram or Oxford Ink Tattoo on Instagram. If you like, you can hit my email, Oxford Ink Tattoo at Gmail. You can send us something, send us some of your work. We'll maybe be able to talk, check on your stuff. Um, 
Right right now, we're going to go ahead and give it up to our sponsors at shoptheox.com, where you can shop for all of your local Urban Ninja wear and anything there. New styles out. New styles out. New drops every month. We got new products coming. We got custom made stuff from ourselves and some other companies that we like to shop with. So check out all of our gear and get nice and fresh. We out of this beat.